Hey, Doc Jones here from the Homegrown Herbalist School, and this is Skullcap. So Skullcap, uh, Scutellaria latera flora, and uh, that's, uh, oh, that's not Skullcap. We got some other guys in here that aren't Skullcap. <laughs> that's prickly lettuce. Should we talk about prickly lettuce? Sure. Let's talk about prickly lettuce. <laughs> so prickly lettuce is uh, <clears throat> good for pain. The whole upper plant is the medicine. You can tell it, it looks sort of like a dandelion, except that the leaves come off on the stems all the way up, and also it has these spines on the back of the on the back of the uh, leaves. This row of spines, and there's spines on the stem. It's just sort of a prickly, grumpy guy. Um, it's pretty good for pain. It's a narcotic, so you can take it internally for pain. Um, also, it has this white sap, this sort of latexy sap. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll milk some of that out. That white sap is good for warts. Okay, you can uh, you can kill warts with that by putting it onto there some. See that? So that's the sap, and and you just take that and put it on topically, and it'll kill warts. Any of the plants that have that white latex sap will do that. You can do it with dandelions or prickly lettuce. Anyway, there's uh, and then here's some cleavers, who's also not skull cap, um, but he was growing in there. Cleavers is in the coffee family. It's got a little caffeine in it. Um, but uh, cleavers is easy to identify. It's got square stems, right? But the leaves come off in a circle. They come off radially, you know, a little circle of leaves here, a little circle of leaves there, all the way up. And it sticks to you, right? That's why they call it cleavers, right? Because it sticks to you. Um, the whole plant's the medicine. And cleavers is a good diuretic. It's good for bladder infections. It's also good for uh, lymphatic congestion, quite good for that. Uh, that's what I usually use it for. Um, but uh, yeah, good little plant, cleavers. It's in the bed straw family. Gallium aparine is the Latin name, and it always is growing somewhere it doesn't belong because it loves you and it doesn't want you to forget about it. But let's talk about skull cap. That's what we were talking about, right? So let's uh, break one of these off. Now, skull cap is in the mint family. So how do we know it's in the mint family? Well, that's easy to tell, right? Because the mint family plants have two traits, always. One is that the stem is square, and the other is that the leaves come off opposite and alternate. So you have two going north and south, two going east and west, two going north and south, two going east and west. If it has those two traits, the square stem and the alternate leaves, uh, the opposite and alternate leaves, then it's a mint, all right? Remember the cleavers had a square stem, but it, the leaves come off in a circle, so it's not a mint, right? And there's other plants like stinging nettle, the leaves come off like this and look sort of like this, um, but the stems usually aren't as square. Once in a while you'll find some nettle that's a little square, uh, just because they're rude and they like to sting people, but uh, <laughs> usually it's a mint. A lot of the mints are very aromatic, right? Peppermint, lemon balm, uh, Menarda, I mean, a lot of them have a strong essential oil component, right? Skullcap doesn't have any of that. You know, in fact, one of the easy ways to tell something is skullcap is if it looks like a mint and it doesn't smell like anything, it's probably skullcap, all right? Uh, that's a, 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 how you tell it apart from the other guys in the family because he looks a lot like, you know, peppermint and, and uh, lemon balm and catnip and some of those other guys are very similar looking, but they all smell like something. This one doesn't smell like anything. So skullcap, what's it for? So um, in the mint family, they have a family mission statement, right? And uh, the family mission statement for the mint family is that we're the mint family and we'd like to do something to your nervous system and we'd really like to kill somebody, right? And so they go off on tangents, you know, some of them uh, are mildly stimulating the nervous system like peppermint can be. Most of them are sedating and calming, uh, which peppermint also is to your guts. But uh, <clears throat> most of them are calming Melissa officinalis, which is lemon balm. You know, good for insomnia, catnip, good for insomnia. Um, <clears throat> and then most of them want to kill something. 
Uh, peppermint will kill anything almost. Oregano, very, very powerful for killing stuff. Lavender. Uh, you know, Melissa likes to kill the herpes virus. Uh, Melissa is lemon balm, right? Very good on the herpes virus. Um, you know, Monarda or bee balm or uh, bergamot or bee balm have a more antifungal bent, you know, so they like to kill fungal things. Um, lemon balm isn't really great for uh, killing stuff. He's sort of on the way other end of the spectrum for doing something to your nervous system. And what he does is he's extremely calming, all right? This is a very uh, sedating plant. It's very good for insomnia. It's good for anxiety and panic attacks. Um, but it's also very good for pain. I use it for pain all the time. Uh, and you can use it topically or internally for pain, the tincture, uh, topically. But uh, really a great plant. It's a mint, so all the mints, the whole plant's the medicine, right? So, you know, this guy's ready for a haircut. We'll come in and cut about a third of that off, and he'll come right back, you know. Another thing to be aware of is that uh, <clears throat> skullcap uh, spreads enthusiastically through root runners, and so... This is a really bad way to grow skull cap because it's everywhere. <laughs> it's, uh, there's two beds of skull cap here and they've almost got it completely filled in in the middle in the path because uh, it's shooting out runners. So it's better to grow skull cap or any of the mints really in, in a pot or in a bed that's got you know some defining boundaries to keep those root runners. Um, most of my mints I have either in raised beds that are, that are high or uh, I've got some mints growing over on the other side of the yard that I've buried like three foot wide roofing tin, you know, around them to keep them from spreading. Uh, but uh, yeah, they're pretty aggressive and pretty enthusiastic about getting more of it for you. So anyway, skullcap, Scutellaria lateriflora. There's two kinds of skullcap. Uh, one is called Biacol skullcap and one is called Mad Dog skullcap. This is the Mad Dog skullcap because they used to um, they used to use it for rabies. Uh, they thought it helped rabies. Um, I don't know that it actually has any antiviral, anti-rabies properties. Uh, I think probably that was more just because it was sedating and calming to the people that were having trouble um, rather than actually killing that virus. But anyway, this is the mad dog skull caps, what they call it. Really great for pain, really great for insomnia, good for anxiety. Um, wonderful plant. So. Anyway, I'm Doc Jones from the Homegrown Herbalist School, and if you enjoyed this, I hope you'll click the little like buttons and uh, share it with people, and, and let's get the word out, you know. Uh, uh, help us to extend our reach, and we'd really appreciate that. If you're very interested in uh, herbal stuff, swing by homegrownherbalist.net and have a look at uh, that website. A lot of fun videos and, and uh, products and blog articles and things, and you can learn about the school, the Homegrown Herbalist School. So this is Dr. Patrick Jones, and thanks for watching.